Hey guys, uh, Chris here at PTTG 120. Well, uh, we're finally here, episode eight of the Camelot build. Uh, I know it's dragging on. Uh, it's uh, 10 months to start it. Uh, and everything else seems to have got in the way. Uh, I blame Hornby for, uh, for constantly bringing out new things. Um, uh, anyway, um, yeah, lighting. And when we lit it last, uh, what it showed up to me was that um, the roundhouse was a bit like the Mari Celeste. Uh, and of course, when all the locos are out of the shed, um, all the doors are left open. So uh, it really does look quite stark inside. So uh, we've got other stuff from Modelu and uh, all the figures, fantastic. Uh, and I'll be doing a little bit of showing what I, my my very basic uh, attempt at uh, painting. Uh, I'm not a high end painter. Uh, I'm just doing something that's good enough for me. Uh, and then I realised that um, even with all those figures and I placed all those figures in, I had nothing to sort of you know. Uh, and even with Model U's um, workbenches and and um, uh, and um, cupboards and all that kind of stuff uh, and a bunch of I, I needed more so I did a whole lot of scratch build stuff uh, for the further back so there's a little bit of if you look further back you can see some stuff in the distance um, but even then it still looked quite stark uh, and so when I was at Doncaster uh, in February um, bumped into uh, Chris at Westall Wagon Works and um, and they've got their range is just getting better and better and better uh, and I must admit, their 3D printing, uh, at a moment, I would suggest they're second to none. Um, the quality of the stuff that comes out of Modelo is, the detail is brilliant. But um, at a moment, I would say Westall Wagon Works, with the way that they set theirs up uh, on their sprues, um, is, is just giving them the edge when it comes to their knickknacks. And I think now that Modelo and Westall Wagon Works are kind of got some sort of you know uh, kind of agreement going on where I think Modelu are focusing on on figures and a few bits and bats and um, we're still uh, uh, focusing on a lot of the detailing kit uh, which is brilliant <clears throat> hopefully they'll become even more combined so that the Modelu produce stuff that it can be uh, that, that fits in with the equipment and, uh, and goods and things that Westall Wagon Works are doing. That would be the next level. Uh, but yes, uh, uh, back back in Doncaster, uh, bumped into Chris, had a look at their range, and bought a whole bunch of things that are kind of can be in the more modern era, but I thought m might still work quite well in this. We get away with it. So <clears throat> there's a lot more things like trolleys and 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 crates and cans and buckets and that kind of stuff just so that every kind of amount of sort of workstation in every uh space the seven spaces between the eight um uh what do you call them tracks you call them what do you call them it's a roundhouse um traps but anyway uh each one of the lanes between them there's now like, like a workstation for the mix of kit from west of wagon works and from modern Air. Uh, and I, uh, I think it's it gives it a nice depth uh, when it's on. The lights are on in the daylight. The lights help you then look through the windows and see what's going on. But nighttime, it also looks fantastic. This is fantastic pattern. We'll see all that in the video. Uh, this is enough of me rabbiting on. Uh, I'll see you at the end. Okay. Okay, so the end of episode eight, I teased you a little bit with the, the lighting. Uh, we are going to get into that pretty soon, but first of all, uh, we need to fit the mechanisms and, and make sure they work. Now, I'd forgotten at the back here, uh, when I let, built this all, that I meant to cut out these little squares to make space for the mech, uh, which is why I'm doing it all speeded up. And there you go, dun -dun. there's little feet, they rock in there, uh, and they just need to be capped off. A little bit of glue. And a little bit of the little caps that go on top. I've put a little bit of scale scenes concrete on top of them. Um, they're so far back 
I'm not going to bother with anything any more than that. I did think about detailing around them, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's willing suspension of disbelief, isn't it? Right, now this mechanism, it works by the loco pushing against the barge boards and pulling, that pulls that mechanism back and then pulls the doors closed. And it needs to push forward on its own, on its own weight, but it wasn't doing that, so I've put some lead. See those strips of lead double-sided on the top to help it fall forward. Um, the loco can hold it in place, but I haven't run, in, run them back and forward yet, so I'm not sure yet whether or not the loco's strong enough to push it back um, with the door, or are they just going to wheel spin? Uh, I'll find that out later. Right, lighting. So the lighting's going to come up through the floor, but before it goes off around, I want it to come into the little office. This is the little, the little I don't know, booking in office. It's got a little... On the wall, it has a little piece where you can where they clock in, but I want to put the light in the ceiling. So I've cut a little hole in the ceiling. Uh, I'm going to use our favourite uh, hot glue gun. Uh, hot glue that into place. Now, what I should have done at this point is blank that off behind so to get rid of the light bleed. Which is something I'm going to have to go back in and do later, uh, further down the line, and then the lighting comes up the side and then I'm just going to be basically a um, little dab of hot glue on the back of the LED like that I'll be pulling all the strings off later and then I'm going to use a pair of tweezers to put it into place because I don't want to burn my fingers not like not like Charlie Bishop with his um, Teflon fingers <laughs> uh, it's too hot for me right so um, we'll f we'll speed through these I think in a minute and I'm basically just going to work this around uh, the the wire is actually quite um, pliable and you can fix it into place so I think in some situations it might be quite good to actually use that as a detail but uh, I'm just making sure it's completely out of shot um, you won't be able to see this unless you stick a camera into the roundhouse there you go a little test nice warm light uh, and then we'll get on and, and crack on with the rest of them. Right, so what I wanted to do here is I wanted to, I wanted to make sure when I look through here that I don't... I try to see a little, as little of the light as possible. So when I've got the light in the middle here, um, I wanna, I'm going to possibly put it higher. So I've put it higher up so that I don't see it through the doorway. So this is the front rank. They're all glued into place and now we've got enough lighting, I think, to, to go around the back. Yep, so we've now done the back. And this is in daylight. It, it's quite a nice warm glow in there in low-level lighting. Um, I know that the back of the tent has come off. <laughs> um, got to sort out some of the light bleed for this roof. I've got a plan for that. Here's it at night. Um, it's a, it looks yellow to me. You can see the problems with the light bleed in the office. So I've got to resolve that. But um, it doesn't look like this. I think this is basically what the iPhone does to the, to the lighting. But something I'm very pleased about is having multiple lights in there. It's casting these multiple um, lights out of the windows. All these different patterns. And all this will be cobbled and water. So that should work really well. Right, now, gluing the roof together. Oh, hang on. What's up, Ted? Oh, he just wants to be involved. Okay, mate. Right, so, um, let's keep the feet warm anyway. Um, I'm going to use this foil tape. Um, it's very strong. And I'm going to glue everything together with foil tape. Uh, this, for this is going to help me in two reasons. One, it's going to completely black out any light bleed through these cracks. It also um, gives a little bit of flex because... I want to be able to remove this roof in one piece. Put it to one side. So if I, if I want to get back in to do to upgrade any of the any of the model making, or if I want, or if there's an engine problem or a track problem inside the roundhouse, I want to gain easy access. So here it is, all covered. And I think something else that's going to help is it, is it will reflect the light. How much I don't know, um, but uh, here we go. Now, uh, as you can see, the blackout test is absolutely perfect, except for the little office. I oh, should be getting on to that. Um, 
yeah, absolutely spot on. I'm very pleased with that. And it has actually given us a bit more bounce with the light. Um, again, under normal conditions, it looks quite warm. It looks much warmer than this. And you can see through the vents at the top, which is good. And we've got a great pattern of lighting. Yes, very pleased with myself. Of course, the only problem now is uh, you can quite clearly see through the windows that um, it's a bit like the Mara Celeste. It's completely empty and dull. Uh, the concrete works well, the brickwork works well, all the timber works fine, but it's void of life. And the thing is, is that when it's got its doors open is when the locos are out. All right, you can... I will be, there'll be occasions where you can just roll the loco forward a little bit. So there's a loco and they're looking good and the doors are open. And that's obviously how it will stand most of the time. But even so, um, yeah, it does look a little bit uh, void of life. Okay, then let's, uh, let's close the doors. There we go. And get on with, we've got some down pipes to fit. Uh, so we're just going to put some... Um, uh, this is the, the the card glue. It works perfectly fine, even though the damn pipes are plastic. Um, I tried super glue, but it's it's not forgiving. Uh, at least this stuff dries completely matte and neutral. There you go. And now I've got to look up where the roof goes on, and the fact that it has a, a gutter. Uh, I think the gutter just sticks inside the, the roof. Uh, it does, and that looks absolutely fine. So now we just got to repeat that sixteen times. Uh, don't worry, I won't video it. Okay, next issue to deal with is around the back. These joints in the plastic kit are covered by thick plastic fake brickwork to make kind of columns. But as you can see, I've not got a lot of space. Now this inside line, to be honest, should only be for the good stuff. So the, the coaches shouldn't be coming down here. Now the coach can, by the absolutely just skip through there um, which is not ideal so I'm going to come up with a clever solution particularly for the for the this one is not so bad it's that second one that's an issue so we're going to have to deal with that but then again as I said these coaches won't be coming down this line or they shouldn't be anyway only by accident so it shouldn't be a massive issue This is what we've been working on from um, Model U and also uh, West Hill Wagon Works. There's a few bits of West Hill Wagon Works in here. Um, the, some of the other benches, the smaller benches, but the bits on top of them are from Model U. Um, really intricate, detailed stuff. Uh, I'm not sure if I can zoom in. Um, yeah, really nicely detailed. Fire hydrants, and we've got. Um, that's how big my thumb is. It's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> uh, let's see if I can zoom in. So, boxes of cover boxes of bits, and pots of grease, and loads of brass fittings, and steel fittings, and dirty rags, and stuff. And uh, fire hoses, talking of fire hoses, with, there's coats hanging up. Um, there's one of the, there's one of the vices. There it is. These bench vices, they're incredibly um, detailed. Um, 
uh, fire cabinets, uh, more fire hoses to go on the go on the wall. Um, what else we got? Uh, more there, yeah, more cabinets over there from office cabinets from um, yeah, from Westfield Wagon Works. Uh, brake blocks need more detailing. Cans need more detailing. They're, these are the the um, the, the, the what you call it? It's the for the cleaners with the side of the locos, access steps. Um, and these are the dudes, let's zoom out a bit. Yeah, so this is the gang that will be in the shed. Not all of them, one or two of them are for, out, for outside jobs. Uh, like the guys who are shifting the um, um, the, the, the slag or the coal. Um, they, do, they do have a lot, a lot, a lot of sprues. And I've tried where po wherever possible to just remove the sprue so that I can then paint the dude. But uh, as you as you are now, they're incredibly detailed guys. Um, um this is what I'm working on. They get a lot of sprue on them. I'm not I'm not sure if they need the so much sprue for this scale, but maybe I might. But um, the some of the tools are like the handle for that spade is just, is super fine, um, and but you can see there's quite a few of them that I did manage to remove the sprue without removing them, which was a bit of a pain. Okay, quick comparison. So right, um, on the left hand side is the model U guy, and here's one with. Uh, here's, one with a, here's one with a shovel. Just turn so yeah, the grey ones, the unpainted ones are the model you guys. As you can see, he's actually stood on some sprue, that's why he looks so much taller. That's more like the height. The guy beside him is um, uh, for more you, more view models. Now uh, more of your model ones do come painted, and they are, um, uh, and they're a lot cheaper. So, and remember when you're looking at these things, they are. Well, here's I put a scalpel beside it. There's there's a scalpel beside it. These guys are absolutely tiny. Yeah. So, um, really. Oh, so that's. When you look at them, I mean, that's their line down on 10 mil squares. That's it. it shows you how small they are. But I must admit, the model you guys, though they're a pain because they're covered in lots of sprue and you've got to paint yourselves, the detail of them is uh, absolutely outstanding. Okay, a bit of progress on the um, painting. Um, the, geese, the gang. Uh, are all ready for their washes and highlights. These are all the base colours, which um, hopefully um, I can. Is that focusing okay? Yeah, sort of a little bit of variation in their outfits, but they're all going to get a bit of a, a bit of a wash over. Right, I've got some wide thing a little bit mixed up, but never mind. Um, you've seen these painted blue, but there you go. Uh, so these are the um, uh, fake cabinets that I'm making. Uh, they're literally just some simple uh, white styrene um, square tubing cut, stuck together, and then a little bit of flat styrene st stuck on the top, which I'll sort of trim back to make it look like a cabinet set of the doors closed. And these will be in the background. A uh, whole bunch of them, I think about 16 of them, I think, will do the job. Um, then um, I like this little style of bench from Modelu, not from Modelu, from West Westall Wagon Works. So I'm kind of copying it in styrene. Um, so um, here's one uh, I made earlier. Uh, on top of this, we'll go lots of little cans made out of piping and then little square pieces and thick pieces of styrene chopped up to make up little cardboard boxes. So they'll be covering over the top of all these little things and then we'll, we'll paint them up in the same colour and style as the stuff that's been detailed, but it's in the background. It's just it's just noise. It's just fill. Now, the reason why I glue these down on a glass top is because the glue doesn't stick to the glass. 
There you go. And you can just go along with a knife afterwards, pop them off, and there's a little bit of tickling. Here's all the bits of all the cardboard boxes stuck on top, uh, ready for painting. Here's some shelves with, with cans and boxes on top. Uh, with little brackets underneath, you'll see them later. And there's the uh, cupboards with bits on top. Right, so we've got um, one of the uh, one of the guys from Model U here, and um, they're really quite detailed. Um, as you can see, they're very small as well, um, which is why I've tried to keep them uh, on their sprue as much as possible. Um, whilst removing everything else. Uh, they've got lots of nice little details, uh, which all should be nicely highlighted uh, when we get this. Spin that over, excuse my dirty thumbnail. Right, and um, I'm gonna try and do this whilst looking through the phone, which I might regret. Uh, yeah, let's give it a go, shall we? Right, so first thing I'm gonna do is we wanna put some She's obviously got all of, he's got all his base colours on, right? It's very simple and matte. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want to put down some, well, highlight the, you want to show off the creases, not highlight, low light. You want to show off the creases with something that's going to get into all those little bits. Um, now you can make up your own with uh, acrylic and thinners or whatever paint you want to use and whatever appropriate thinner. Um, I find sometimes that leaves a shine, sometimes it, it can leave little bits, sometimes it can attack what you've already painted. So um, what I like to do is go to my son's bedroom, uh, find his uh, his Citadel uh, paints for his uh, Warhammer stuff, and go and take his shade Null Oil, which is uh, basically, um, well, it's for doing washes, uh, and you'll see it's bloody perfect. Little dude up again. Now, something else I like to keep handy when I'm doing this is a little cotton wool bud because sometimes it can get a little bit heavy. So, we're just going to go on very, very quick once over with a null on the oil. Okay, everything can have a go. And then we're going to just knock some of that back so that. He's not quite as dirty, but it should highlight. And then spin it around. Another quick wash over the back, which as you can see, shows off all the creases. And then again, I'm gonna take some of that away. Go back in here and there with a few bits. completely dirty. Right, okay, and then just check that his face is okay. I'm just using a an older brush here that's a little bit fluffy because it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now we've got that on. That obviously needs to dry. Okay, so he's nice and dry now. As you can see, we can it's highlighted or low lighted some of his little creases. Um, remember, this is you you may well have seen some of the model U stuff before. Um, quite often, what you're looking at is um, uh, O gauge, uh, and they are fantastic in O gauge. This is much smaller, so you know, you don't, you you've got to expect you're not going to get quite as much detail. But even so, I think they are. Um, pretty good. Well, no, actually, they're excellent. Right, let's have a little play with some highlights now. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to take the two base colours, put them on a little palette here, mm -hmm. yeah. and then I'm going to add a little bit of white to them just to um, lighten them. All right, but take the original base colours, pop a little splodge of, of white in amongst them, Let's get them up in front of the camera again. Okay, so this time we're going to take a bit of the grey, and then what I tend to do is 
can't show it to you there. Uh, I, I tend to work it on my hand and use my finger as a palette. Right, so this is the grey and we, all we're going to do is very gently, we're just going to dust it almost. You're not painting this model, now you're kind of rubbing it. Around. You are literally just rubbing it. And if you can see any particular marks on there, like creases in the jeans, trousers, try go against them, not with them. And that way you won't put the colour inside. Yeah, just the dusting. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing with the blue of the jacket. Again, work it off my hand. And we're going to literally just dust it. I'm going to actually just put a very little bit on top of his hat. There we go. So the blue actually really shows off the creases. Let's go in there with some vanilla oil. Just take the worst of it off. I'm just going to make sure the bucket has some in there. Yep. Right. Let that dry. Right, okay, so now the non is nice and dry. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with a bit of the same blue mixed with a little bit of white. So we've got the same kind of tone. And again, I'm gonna use my, um, my finger as a, a palette. And then let's Let's see if we can pick up some of these highlights. There we go. So it's just enough to highlight the creases and give you a little bit more detail. Um, you could put a little bit on the cap. Right now, that's um, it's really basic. It's really simple. There are guys out there doing uh, so many more layers, right? But um, perfect one to do uh, on on my layout. Uh, I think he's going to be just absolutely fine, uh, mainly because um, they are so small. Okay. Onto the rest of the game. Okay, so uh, we've now stuck all those pieces in place. You can see it on the back there and on the side. But um, as I said, it's a very big uh, space and it's very empty. Now, I, I did put the little guys in on well, little bits of black tack, but it still seemed quite empty. That's why we went down the route of getting some more bits and bats from West Hill Wagon Works. And here they are with the guys in place. So we'll do a quick pass, um, a couple of guys, but this is the main kind of photo shoot area where we're gonna have locos positioned. And then, but you'll see as we peek through, 
each one of the workstations has basically a point of interest. Um, the uh, and I can't quite focus on the fire hydrant, but all the fire hydrants are on the outside of the building, um, and so are the hose reels that they, they don't show up here at all. Sorry, but you get to see all the little cameos at least. So we'll carry on with this little pass while I try to get things to focus off of the doors. There we go. Dude holding up a ladder and a couple of guys checking the gauges on the on the gas. Um, that's better. Uh, and then there's a pan round, uh, just various bits and bats, just to sort of fill the space up. Um, the um, And also, I don't want it to look too weird when the locos are in. That's why a lot of it's centralised in those spaces, in those sort of zones. But uh, yeah. Uh, I think I'm happy with that. Now we need to move on to um, uh, sorting out issues with the lights, I think. Um, why am I waving the camera around so much? Ah, oh, yeah, because we've got more. There we go. Uh, you might have guessed I'm putting the audio on top of this because it just the original audio just had me making too much noise with the camera. But, yeah, happy with that. You can see deep at the back and see some cabinets and some shelves and things, so... Uh, have some interest. Now, here's the issue uh, that I referred to earlier about having um, too much light bleed in the roof. Now, trying to seal those joints is proving too testing. So instead, uh, I think the best alternative is to get in there with uh, a scalpel. Right, let's um, try and get from the other side. There you go. Slightly speed it up. And that came off. Okay, uh, and this is the problem bit, this glue. Uh, so we're going to cover it up with tack black. It's basically like blue tack, um, but we use it in the film industry. It's got some excellent qualities. Um, it's very sticky, uh, and it also um, <clears throat> it's a fantastic light blind. Uh, so I'll just tidy it up so it sits in there nicely, uh, and then just make sure everything's going to be okay and seal down and we'll do a quick little test let's turn the big lights off yeah that'll do for me <clears throat> right we'll glue the lid on and uh, see how it, see how it works with the lid, with the actual lid glued on boom, boom, boom. there you go and let's do a little test Yay. No blood, no light bleed. Perfect. Right, we can crack on. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, tack black or black tack, um, it, um, it's cracking stuff. It's very sticky, uh, but you can actually cut it with a scalpel. Uh, a little awkward, a little bit of practice and you'll get there. Um, <clears throat> and... What I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to, um, is it actually easy to cut through the backing? And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut some little strips and then we're going to apply this around all the contact points for the roof because I want the roof to be something that I can remove. Um, having trains derail there is not a big issue because you can reach in and pull them out. Um, but it's more a case of if I need to, if I ever need to clean the track again, or if I have a, a bigger issue in there, or want to add some detailing, I want to be able to get in there without having to wreck the roof. So the whole thing is going to get stuck with this black tag. Now, <clears throat> the actual adhesive is much, much stronger than blue tack, uh, and like, as I said, it works very well as a light block. So we'll just pick this off up. I'll we'll probably just fast forward this a little bit because. Who really wants to watch me <clears throat> put 16 pieces of black tack in place? There we go. So we've got a nice kind of seal going around. You won't see this. And here's the roof on top. And quick test round. Yep. Zero light bleed. Light's only coming from where we want it to come from. Uh, and uh, on my finger. Uh, yeah, it shows up what's going on inside really nicely. Um, and the light where the lights are positioned, it kind of makes this little bit of red plastic glow like a little lamp. So I'm pleased with that as well. And here's the finished thing uh, all in place. Here's uh, salmon trout being uh, being 
prepared. Uh, and um, do you know what? I should have put all the locos in for you, but <laughs> at least this way you get a good a good see through. Well, um, I hope that was worth waiting for. Uh, I keep promising that the next one won't be so long. In fact, the next one probably won't be so long because it's about time uh, that I did the dreaded ballasting. I say dreaded, that's because what's what people call it. Uh, but I rather enjoy um, ballasting. And I'll be doing a little bit of a combo uh, with... Um, now, you will have heard people talk about chinchilla dust. Okay. Now, chinchilla dust or chinchilla sand and chinchilla powder. Now, chinchilla sand is quite a fine sand and good, and it's about the scale of N gauge. That's pretty good for ballasting. Although in this instance, I'm using, uh, um, what am I using for it? I can't remember. It's either it's either it's either Scenics or it's um, WW Scenics. I think it's WW Scenic stuff that I'm using. It might be Gauge Master, but you'll find out in the next video. But but I'm but that's just for the main line. For all the rest of it, for the yard kind of work, I'm doing um, or where stuff is much older and, and and there's a lot more dirt and filth, I'm going to use chinchilla powder. A chinchilla powder is super fine. It's a super fine sand. Uh, and it, it works really well. Um, you can muck about with the colours of it by using powdered pigments uh, from the oil painting world that you mix. My wife does oil painting. So Mrs. Peter does oil painting and uh, as a hobby. Uh, and she's got all these powders to making her own pigments and things. Uh, and so um, now I'd seen, who's the Swedish chap? I can't remember his name. Seen he'd been using it, and I thought, hey, well, my wife's got some of that stuff. Let's give it a go. And it works brilliantly. So I've got these diff various different blends of chinchilla dust, dust powder, chinchilla powder. Uh, and it's, it's more awkward, more time consuming, but that's the way I like it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that's enough of me today. Been going along for long enough. Uh, so don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, you can ring the little bell. Uh, poke Peachy in the face. Uh, and there's probably going to be a couple of videos here and here. But Jimmy says he's got a different idea for an ending. So the videos might not appear straight away. It might appear now or later. Anyway, take care. See you soon. Cheerio, bye. You'll find him surrounded by all his luggage in a first class compartment. But you'll be afraid. Just slip the window down and say, Peachy's gone south for the week. Peachy's gone south for the week? Yes, and he'll tackle. Well, I'll uh, be getting off now before we reach the station.